Hey, it's Mr. Mice Guy, and this is day two, update two of the uh, of Dopamine's lockdown litter. And uh, I've uh, started by washing my hands, and uh, we are going to take a peek at the mice uh, today. We are going to hold them, um, but we're going to start by getting uh, Dopamine out of her nest and moving her to a different cage while we do that. I hope everyone's doing okay out there. Um, and you might notice here in this video, uh, or in my videos, is that like everything's tilted down a little bit, and that's because I actually have the like the, the bin propped up on its side, so that I can get a better angle with better lighting. Um, let's see if we can get her. You do have to be careful because sometimes uh, mothers will bite if you uh, poke around at them with their with their pups. Uh, again, this is a mouse that I'm very familiar with. So, um, we're pretty good. So she's gonna go over there with some snacks. All right. Uh, I'm also going to uh, just kind of wash my hands in the bedding <laughs> to uh, get some of some that like, urine or whatever's in there on my hands. And uh, let's uh, see how we're doing. There we go. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna move. I'm just gonna move the. I'm just gonna do something different here. I was trying to prop it up, see, when it's actually straight up, we go here. Um, I'm actually going to take them out. And uh, we are going to take a peek at them. Oops, I thought that was a baby, it was a piece of tissue. And we're going to take a peek at them in my hand, just like this. Looks like all of them. So we're actually gonna move that out of the way, and we're gonna move the cage a little bit. There we go. This is a little better. All right. Here they are. So um, the first thing I want to do is I want to get all the bedding, separate them from the bedding. So we're gonna put them back here for a second. Um, like I mentioned in the last video, uh, mouse pups do not make their own body heat, so they do need to stay warm. Um, keeping them together is a way to do that. Your hands are pretty warm too, but you definitely don't want them to get cold. Oops, <laughs> dropped one. That'd be okay. So that's the last one we got. All right, I'm just gonna sweep all this bedding away. And then we have just the pups. No bedding. There we go. Looking cool. So uh, let's start by counting them. Uh, Cause I think I may actually have 12 yesterday. I thought I counted 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 pups. Um, And let's see what we have for pink eyes and black eyes. So we got, we got one black eye, two black eyed pups, three black eyed pups, three pink eyed pups, four black eyed pups, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like seven pink eyed pups. All of these guys over here are all pink eyed. I should manage to turn them so they face the camera. See, pink eye. Seven pink eyed and uh, four. That doesn't add up to 12, does it? That one's not pink eyed. So we got 
we got five black eyed ones and seven pink eyed ones. So these are all the black eyed ones, each of the pink eyed ones, um, which is kind of surprising. I would have expected that we would have gotten more uh, black eyed pups than pink eyed pups. So that's interesting, uh, considering both parents are only carriers. Um, you would expect that maybe like 25% of them, did I do that right? Yeah, I think about 25% of them should be uh, pink-eyed, but it seems like we got a much larger uh, batch of pink-eyed pups, which is certainly possible. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put them down, um, and I'm going to go through each one of them and just do a kind of quick look over. Do a quick look over and see... Um, if everybody has all of their feet and toes and <laughs> all that, um, because that's, that's important. And we're just gonna lay down two pieces of their nest over here so I can move them around as I need to. So I am looking at them through the camera lens here, so it can be a challenge to see what's going on sometimes. But um, I've had like clubbed feet before. Sometimes you get extra toes, and if you don't look at them closely, you could easily miss some of that. Um, so it looks pretty good. Um, and another thing uh, that I should have mentioned earlier was that, and this one here is in such a cute position, I should have mentioned earlier that I'm going to do um, an update per day, so like update 2 is going to be day 2. Um, but then I might also do like update 2.1, uh, so it'll be also day 2, but a second update on that day. Yeah. Looking good. It's good to me. Oh, by the way, I think the first two are male. I'm going to make a video on uh, sexing pups, but uh, yeah, I think. This one, I think, maybe female. But I'll go into that in more detail in a, another video. This one maybe male. All right, let's do that. See, let's do this so you can see them. How's that? Is that better? There you go. pink eye. I'd say this one's a male. Something I forgot to mention before, see those lines on the skull? Uh, yeah, that's that's at the skull. You're seeing um, the... So even when humans, when they're born, their skull comes in different pieces and then they fuse together with age and they become this like suture. On a mature skull, it almost looks like the uh, the skull was like stitched together and you're seeing that here through the skin. That looks good. Another thing that's going on by handling them all is habituation. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say female on this one um, is a uh, habituation where uh, the mice just get used to. Um, contact through regular contact. So it's a little bit different than like positive conditioning because nothing necessarily positive is happening, although there might be some positive conditioning with the warmth of my hand. They might uh, they might enjoy the warmth of my hand. Yes, I don't see anything wrong with this one here. Um, oh, another thing you can see here is that that's where the umbilical cord was. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, so they all have a little umbilical cord spot because they are... Uh, they are placental mammals. A little black eyed one. Umbilical cord spot. 
you can actually see on this one too, you can see pretty good the milk spot. See how there's like some white in there? That's the belly. Toes look good. This one I think, I think maybe male. It, it, this early, it's really hard to tell, and I I, I do get it wrong sometimes. Um, yeah, so something that happens uh, by her, uh, handling them early. Um, actually, let's take a step back. So I've heard that uh, most like fancy mouse breeders do not handle their pups. And uh, the reason for that is, I'm gonna guess female on this one. Um, the reason for not handling them is, is that they want the factors that influence temperament to be genetic only. And when you handle them, they are being habituated, they're being conditioned um, to your handling and your interaction. And so they will, you know, gonna be more, they're going to be tamer, but it's because they've learned to be tamer, not because they necessarily have a genetic predisposition. And so if you're trying to breed for animals, um, uh, this one, I'm going to say female on that one too. Um, if you're trying to breed for animals that are tame, that are, have a genetic predisposition to taming, you don't want any other variables. You don't want the, the, the conditioning to be a variable. Uh, in that. So some breeders don't, which I totally uh, can understand that argument. I think that's a valid argument. Um, let's see how this guy's doing. This one I'm going to say is a male. And again, I'm going to make a second video explaining that. Um, yeah, he's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. This one's a male. And uh, see that milk? You can see the milk to the stomach there, in the belly. Um, yeah, oh, there you can see it really good there. He's been getting a lot of attention. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. So some breeders don't. I I do, as you can tell. Um, and handling does a couple things. Uh, it does the habituation, the conditioning, and um, something that it does is it actually stresses them out a little bit. And uh, it stresses the mother out as well. And then when you give the mother back, she will groom the pups. Um, and what that does is it actually it changes the expression of their DNA. Um, and so later in life, they have better stress regulation. And so later when uh, they're being handled, when they're adults, it'll be less stressful to them. Um, and then the conditioning makes it easier to handle them later in life too. So yeah, so that's um, something that I, I do. And, and also because I'm filming them and taking photographs of them, I kind of want animals that are uh, tame um, because it makes it a lot easier. And I enjoy doing it, so I do it. <laughs> but um, that's gonna be it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out my website, mrmysky.com, as well as my Instagram, at mrmysky. And uh, I will see you in the next video.